Okay, Code BC, Unit 2, Day 5. Still talking about limits. We'll focus on indeterminate forms today and how to determine them. And we're going to use L'Hopital's rule. So, so far we've been taking care of some indeterminate forms, like in behavior by looking at dominant terms, or um, holes in the graph by getting rid of them. And the methods I'm going to show you today could be used for some of those. But this will also help us for some other situations. <clears throat> so, L'Hopital's rule in general says that uh, if both functions go to zero or infinity, and this also works for uh, infinity, so infinity over infinity, um, then we can reevaluate the limit the limit of, of the original limit equals a new limit as x approaches a. And this would be more the technical way of showing your work on the first response. Like you would want to say equals zero, zero equals this right away. You'd want to show that you would actually want to show this and then directly connect this to the limit of the derivatives. Now make sure that you do not use uh, the quotient rule here. Okay, so it's which is awesome actually. We're just going to take the derivative of the top and the bottom separately, so it's usually pretty clean. I'm going to show you some tough ones though. Now, trying to prove this, I'll prove it a couple, couple different ways. If we were to take a look at a couple sort of generic graphs here, try and, and uh, they both. For instance, this is for like, if they both go to zero, then that means that these two functions will actually, you know, have X intercepts at that value of say A. So we'll call this one G of X and we'll call this one F of X. And uh, they're both equaling zero at this certain point like we should up here. Um, now, you know, if you zoom in on these graphs, one of the, this is an idea we talked about before, is they start to appear linear, like just straight lines, okay? And uh, they are differentiable functions, um, local linear, locally linear linearization. So let's, uh, you know, they, they start to just look like uh, whatever the tangent line would be at that point. For instance, you know, let's say this one's like one and this one's like negative two. Um, then, you know, so let's look at this. You have a f of x over g of x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to do some little tweaks to this, and a lot of it's written down for you, but some of it isn't. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by one over x minus a, which we should be able to do fractions, right? So we get this new x minus a. Now, we could just subtract zero from both of them. That, I should be allowed to do that, but we've already established that f of a does equal zero. So let's put f of a for that zero, and we've established g of a equals zero, so let's put g of a there. So if those equal zero, then we can put them wherever we want when we're plugging a in. Now, what you should recognize is this is a change in y of function f over change in x. This is rise over run, which is the slope of the function f which is the derivative of f at that value at that point of a. So the same thing on the bottom, we're getting rise over run, we're getting the slope of g, which is g prime. So um, anyways, just, you know, we're kind of taking this and adding and changing stuff to it and showing that it should be true if both of them equal zero. See, this wouldn't make sense if they didn't equal zero. Okay, now working backwards and trying to prove it kind of a different way is we're saying, let's start with the derivatives. This is the definition of the derivative, right? And then um, we could combine them together into a single limit. That's just properties of limits. And then we could simplify this and get rid of the x minus a's. And then we would have f of x minus f of a over g of x minus g of a and we've established already this is all under the assumption that f of a uh, equals zero and g of a equals zero so we could replace those with zeros because they're supposed to equal zero 
and then we would eventually get down to a simplified expression lemma as x approaches a of f of x over g of x, which we're trying to show that the, that the ratio of the derivatives is the same as the uh, limit of the original ratio functions if they both go to zero. So anyways, just some different algebra kind of manipulations to show that one equals the other under these special circumstances. So let's try some examples. If we plug zero in here, we get one minus one and zero on the top, zero on the bottom. So we're gonna say that this directly equals the limit as x approaches zero of the derivative of the top. And on the top, that's like to the one half power. So it's gonna be one half, one plus x to the negative one half, derivative of minus one to zero and the bottom's one. So that's gonna be the same thing as limit as x approaches zero of one over two square root of one plus x. And if you plug zero into that, you get one half. Now, if you look at the graph of this original function, um, we could try it on maybe the calculator real quick. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at this function. Um, we're going to put parentheses around the top, square root, 1 plus x, close the square root, minus 1, inside the parentheses on the top, divided by x. Window, let's just say negative 2 to 2, negative 2 to 2. So there's the function. It's like a, it's kind of like an upside down half of a parabola. But it's kind of going, it's kind of going like this. If you plug negative 1 into it, you get a negative 1 over negative 1, which is positive 1. And then it kind of goes like this. Right? I mean, that's what the function looks like. And we're saying, well, when you approach x equals 0, what's happening? Well, clearly it looks like it's going towards a point. We could say trace, you know, look at this. I would guess it looks like it's 0.5. So, I mean, graphically, you know, it, it looks like it should be 0.5. So that should help, help you feel better about it. Okay, now twice repeated or stronger form of Lotal's rule is all it's just saying is that we can repeatedly use L'Hopital's rule. We can repeatedly use L'Hopital's rule. Um, meaning if you get another indeterminate four, zero of zero, infinity over infinity, you just you keep taking the derivatives. And hopefully it's going towards an answer. Something other than just zero over zero. Okay? So here's a quick example. If we plug zero in here, we get square root of one is one minus one is zero minus one half times zero is zero is zero over zero. So then, and I want you to show me this before you use L'Hopital's rule. And that's honestly the lazy way of doing it. On, on, on first response, we, that's not good enough. But let's see, that'd be one half, one plus x to the negative one half minus one half over two x. And if you plug zero into this, you get one to the negative one half, which is one, one half minus one half is zero over zero. So that means, well, let's just try it again. And if we do it again, we get negative one fourth, one plus x to the negative three halves over two, which we could rewrite in more friendly form if you want. This would be negative one over eight, one plus x to the positive three halves. Now if you plug zero into here, uh, you're gonna get negative one eighth. So that's a repeated use, twice repeated, or even more repeated. It doesn't be more than that. So I have a few examples on the back, and I just wanna show you some just different variations to help you with your assignment. Um, so now the mothership, Mr. Staten liked to call it, uh, was those indeterminate forms that were allowed to use L'Hopital's rule on because in the coming days, we're going to see some other indeterminate forms, answer, you know, forms that we cannot determine the answer from, but we're not allowed to use L'Hopital's rule on. So we're gonna have to do some extra work to get to one of these forms. So um, if we plug pi over two in, uh, remember secant's one over cosine and tangent's sine over cosine. 
So that's going to be uh, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So uh, that's going to go to infinity. And the bottom right here, cosine is going to be 0. So that's going to go to infinity. So you get infinity over infinity. So then we could use L'Hopital's rule. Derivative of secant is secant tan. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. And you are allowed to uh, simplify these. And tangent is sine over cosine. And secant is 1 over cosine. So we could even do that. And it's just the limit as x approaches pi over 2 of sine of x. So that equals 1. There you go. Now the same problem, but maybe take take this approach as simplifying it before, and you might be able to avoid using L'Hopital's rule sometimes. Now it worked out fine this time, but let's see if we can just simplify this first. So secant is one over cosine, and we started writing this kind of stuff before, anyways. Tangent sine over cosine. So what we could do is say, well, let's try and clean this up. Let's multiply the top and bottom by cosine. And we would get a uh, limit as x approaches pi over 2 of 1 over cosine x plus sine x. Now, if we plug pi over 2 into this, we get 1 over cosine pi over 2 is 0 plus sine pi over 2 is 1. We get 1 over 1 is 1. So we didn't really need, we didn't have to use L'Hopital's rule, but it did work. But, you know, just something to keep in mind that there might be another or even easier way to do, do a problem than L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule is not like the magic easy way to do every problem. Okay, this one, if you go to infinity, what, what happens to the natural log as you go to infinity? It goes to infinity. And square root, that goes to infinity. Okay, so we're going to take limit as x goes to infinity. So we can't simplify it like last one. Derivative top is 1 over x. Uh, derivative of the bottom is x to the negative 1 half. Now what we should probably do is clean this up a little bit. So this is the same thing as 1 over x to the 1 half. So we could do, you know, uh, change it so it's not a complex fraction. 1 over x times the reciprocal of the bottom. So I'm not doing, I'm just simplifying stuff right now. So I'm going to get that, which is also the same thing as that, and uh, that's going to go to 0, right? Bottom's dominating. So right here, if you click 3 and you get 0, 0. Now, this was a problem that we, this is a hole in the graph, and we've been solving those a certain way. I think this is actually easier probably this time. The derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom, super easy. Plug 3 in, you get 1 over 27. I mean, so we, we, we could have factored and canceled out the whole and got the same answer. But this works too. And, you know, Lobetal's was easier this time. And I want to emphasize easier this time. Sometimes it's not a good idea. Sometimes it, it, it'll, it'll go in circles. Okay, next one. Uh, if we go to infinity, get infinity over infinity uh, in determinate form. Let's take the derivative of the top. It's going to be 50x to the 49 over e to the x. If we plug, we get infinity over infinity again. Okay, so we can, we can do it again. Um, and so we're going to get uh, 50 times 49 times x to the 48th over e to the x. This is going to be infinity over infinity again. Okay, this is going to take forever. This is not going to finish until we get this x to go away on the top. But what we might recognize is that I think by the time we get there, it's going to be 50 times 49 times 48 times 47 times 46. It's going to be 50 factorial. It's going to be a big number. But despite that being a big number, when you plug e to the infinity in the bottom, 
Oh, it's going to blow up, <laughs> and the answer is going to be zero. So uh, today's assignment, page 450, 1 through 16. Uh, use Lobtow's rule in this assignment when you're asked to. Uh, even if you can find the limit another way, I want you to use Lobtow's rule. I want you to try it out and get, get some good practice with it today. So that's it. Try it out. Check your odds in the back of the book.